Vladimir Putin has rolled the dice. His troops are marching through Ukraine. Explosions are being heard across Kiev. The war has officially begun. The question is, how much will the West sacrifice for Ukraine now? How far are Western leaders prepared to go? Four of them in particular. U.S. President Joe Biden, French President Emmanuel Macron, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz and British Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Remember, they vowed to protect Ukraine, come what may. But all they've offered so far are words of condemnation. None of these leaders is sending troops to fight Russia. They've all ruled out a direct confrontation. So the test for them right now is to prove that they're not what Putin has long called them. Shallow, pretentious and ineffective, his words. No longer able to act with the kind of strength and purpose required to defeat a determined opponent. That's how Putin sees Western leaders. So what will they do? What options do they have? And how much will these options work? In the next four minutes, we'll discuss. For the West, sanctions are their top strategy at the moment. That's what they're betting on. But they're a blunt weapon. Russia is not Iran, remember, or North Korea. Sanctions will be a double-edged sword with Russia. They will hurt Putin, yes, but they'll also hurt the West. Europe depends on Russia for its energy needs, as I just told you. Penalties on Russian Moscow will mean costs for Brussels. They will have to find a way to hit Russia where it hurts, in the pocket. And this includes removing Russia from the SWIFT financial system. What's that? SWIFT is an enabler of financial transactions. It allows you to transfer money from one bank to another around the globe. Removing Russia from the system, from SWIFT, will be the toughest financial step the West can take. It would cut off Russia from international transactions, stop it from accessing profits from oil and gas production. And this is big money we're talking about. These exports account for 40% of Russia's annual revenue. This move could damage Russia's economy immediately and also hurt it in the long term. Has this been done before? Well, not really. In 2014, when Russia annexed Crimea, the NATO considered this option, removing Russia from SWIFT. But Moscow threatened an all-out war, and the West backed off. Well, eight years on, a war has broken out, and the West is still slow on swift. They can't decide if Russia should be cut off. Next option, export controls. And here, too, the ball is in America's court. A U.S. exports control is going to hurt Russia. It'll block access to software and advanced technology, technology that helps run most of our modern world. America's dominance over software, technology, and equipment is unparalleled. It has already targeted Cuba, Iran, North Korea, and Syria through exports controls. Could Russia be the next in line? Yes, says the New York Times. It says the Biden administration is preparing curbs on Russia's access to U.S. technology. The next option is to target the elites on whom Russia depends. If the world is serious about punishing Russia, it will have to cross some red lines. Go after Russian oligarchs, maybe. The ones staying abroad, who contribute billions to the Russian economy. At least 44 Russian oligarchs live abroad. So does their wealth in Western bank accounts. The US is home to 10 such individuals. The UK has 11. The remaining are in Switzerland, Austria, Monaco, Israel, and several other countries. If the West targets these individuals and freezes their businesses, it might help force Putin's hand. Then, of course, we have the military option. Western deployments so far are designed to defend NATO territories, not to limit the Russian advance or provide Ukrainian forces with active assistance. And the West needs to look at these options carefully because how this war plays out will set the template for other expansionist regimes. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.